You're listening to Whispers of War. Hello everyone and welcome to Whispers of War, show number 13. Unlucky 13, I have to say, because guess what guys, my computer issues are not over yet. Um, in fact, it's actually gotten worse. Uh, so, a little bit of a recap. I brought the PC to the shop, which is a bit of a hit and miss because sometimes you just get, you know, screwed. <laughs> and uh, I think I got screwed because they said to me, oh, it is just, you know, your system is really slow because it's on your normal hard disk instead of your SSD. To which I replied, no, my system has been on my SSD but I needed to check, you know, if, if it was anything with the updates and I couldn't install it for some weird reason on my SSD, so it went on my HD. And they didn't really say anything about that. They just basically flogged me a new SSD card, which is not bad because I needed one, but really, in all fairness, all they did was reinstall uh, Windows, which I could have done myself, and that was it. So... I still have the issues. I've tried everything. I've tried everything with a, a friend of the family who's really into his computers, um, who helped me for free. <laughs> so, so that's good because normally he would charge. And um, we just, we can't figure it out. It must be a Windows 10 update that is doing something with some of my software and my hardware. Um, because all of my hardware did get tested and it was all fine. There was nothing wrong with my hardware. And uh, yeah, so basically what is happening is that my system is really slow and as any insane, you know, insane person, I've started to, to Google all the symptoms uh, and instead of, you know, my, uh, my computer being dead, basically a lot of people have complained about, I think, the latest update that happened in October which makes some PCs really laggy, and especially in games. And the tip I've received from, from most people is wait for a new update. So yeah, that's that's pretty crap, in all honesty. Um, I am not 100% sure if I can still do interviews at this point in time. So I'm really sorry, guys, if, if that's the only reason why you listen. You might have to take a break from this podcast for a little bit. I am going to try. I will always try to um, to test it in between. Because when I tested this with my friend Fasha, it actually sounded alright. I just have to close everything else down in the background. Don't open any pages. Because it doesn't seem to like that. Then you get the weird static sound and I sound all, you know, Mr. Robotic. Which is not what we want. We don't want to sound like... like um, a Dalek or anything like that. We don't want to do that for the podcast. But I do want to keep the interviews going. So all I can do is try it. Try it with my guests if they are happy to, to be my little guinea pigs. And um, if it doesn't work, then you'll get a show without an interview. And then hopefully, maybe the next couple of days, all of a sudden my system goes, yeah, why not? Let's do it. It's it's a bit of a hit and miss. I'm, so I'm really, really sorry about that. But at least I can still you know, talk a little bit about World of Warcraft and all of the stuff that's been announced. I, I guess, especially now with BlizzCon, it's good to talk about the announcements. That will keep us busy, I guess. Um, so what have I been doing in World of Warcraft? Not a lot, because my game, you know, the frames are all over the place. It's just insane. So I've tried every trick in the book. Honestly, trust me, I've tried it all. Um, and I basically have to reduce my graphics now to like setting number four. And, um, that's already horrible when I could play it on like 10. And, um, it just doesn't want to, to do it. Not that I can't play, I can play it, but, but I go from like 10 frames to 50 to 100, back to 50 to 10 to 24. It's just all over the place. And if I put the settings really low, then it just hovers between 24, 39, 50. And it still stutters a little bit. Like, I can't play for long sessions like all of us love to do. Can't do that because uh, it gives me a headache. <laughs> I don't know if that's because I'm older now, but I can't keep looking at the stuttering now and again. It just it really messes with my eyes. 
Um, so I'm taking it slow. And that actually brought me to what I was going to do next, because um, I've applied to a new alliance guild, because I feel it's time to, um, to find an in-game family again, like I used to have. Uh, unfortunately, lots of my... Uh, you know, my first big guilds that I joined. A lot of people don't play anymore or we all play on different realms and it's just, it's difficult now. And like I've said in the past, you know, I do want to have that feeling again that you are among people that are just so friendly and that feel like a family. So I've gotten a tip um, from from people that we all know. I'm not going to say especially what's going to happen just yet because I want to see what happens um, with the application I made because they might not want me, you know, it might might just be like that. Um, and um, so I applied to the guild. I did apply with a new character because um, I didn't want to have a high level alliance character. I really wanted to play something fresh and new. And I basically made a baby void elf warlock because... I've never really gotten into Warlock, and it's like with Rogue, I feel like I have to try it. I, I do love the class fantasy, like with Rogue, so yeah, I, I'm going to um, to try that. Of course, I'm also still looking for a family on the Horde side, but at the moment, I'm very much into um, my Void Elf. And I think it has to do with the colors, and I know that sounds incredibly stupid. But I love the cosmic colors, you know, the, the purple, the blue, and the pink. I'm really digging it. And I think the whole fact of, you know, okay, Void Elves, I don't have much with the lore, if I'm honest. I don't have much with the lore, but they look great. And, and that does it for me. I mean, I, I play uh, Blood Elf Rogue. So it feels kind of like the same. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm playing Affliction. God knows why. I just, you know, that was the thing that, that was there. And I just thought, you know what, I'll just stick with it. If you guys think I should level as a different spec, please let me know because I know nothing about Warlocks. So I'm very happy to, to switch. If you guys say, no, you need to pick this spec. This is much better. You have a lot more fun. So that's what I'm trying. I am at the moment in um, Darkshire and uh, love the setting. I really do. I think what I also really like about, you know, Warlocks are, are quite slow compared to other classes in the sense of that you don't have any nifty tricks to to jump forward or anything like that. There's, there's nothing like, for instance, Displacer Beast or, 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 you know, with rogues that you can run all of a sudden. You don't have that in a Warlock. I, f I find them quite slow. However, I think as a Void Elf, when you have the little portal thingy, it's not too bad. So <laughs> I've been uh, abusing and using that a little bit. And quite enjoying it. And uh, yeah, so I'm in Darkshire now. And like I said, when I'm stuttering, it's not too bad when you have to kill like 20 bears for their asses. Just because it's relatively simple, those areas. You know, I don't really need to know much about the story. I don't feel like, oh, I'm missing something if I just go click, 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 yeah, done. Next to the, to the next area. It's all right at this point in time. Um, we will see what happens when I, I get a bit higher, but at the moment it's doable. I'm, I, in all fairness, I'm just praying to, to the dark gods that we're going to get an update for Windows really soon and for NVIDIA for my graphics card because uh, it's so, I don't know, it's strange, isn't it? Like sometimes we all get in a bit of a slump of, oh, I don't, yeah, I don't really feel like playing. But the moment you can't play anymore, that's when you really want to play. So that's how I feel. I'm, I feel like a crack addict without my crack. And, um, yeah, it's, it's not a pretty sight. <laughs> but yeah, playing the warlock, quite enjoying it. So I play little stints and, uh, and now she's almost level 30 with war mode on, of course. I have not been ganked just yet but you know Stranglethorn is next on the agenda so I'm sure I will be dying there a lot um, again if any warlocks out there who are very good at PvP want to give me some tips to survive I don't need to kill anything as long as I can survive just let me know uh, and that's that's really all I've been doing in World of Warcraft because my uh, my rogue is out of resources for her, <laughs> for her missions on the mobile phone and honest to God, I cannot do any World of Quest with the lag I'm experiencing or with the, the frame stuttering. I cannot do it. So, yeah, unfortunately, I think with the way it's going, 
when the new races come out, I will be very late with obtaining those. And again, there's no rush, but it's a bit of a shame. So, meh. I feel a bit, bit bummed out about it. But at least, at least I still have a working computer. At least I can still podcast. I just have to be a little bit, I guess, resourceful with it. Um, so yeah, that's really it. Also, I really want to thank everyone for downloading the last show for so much. I've, I've seen a lot of new people download it. Thank you so much. You guys are absolutely freaking amazing. Uh, and of course, thank you, Talia Sunevitel, for, for being on the show. I had such a blast. And I'm really sorry that, that, you know, the computer lagged out again. And that's why you sometimes hear a bit of a weird sound. But yet, despite everything, you guys still downloaded it. So I appreciate that. Um, and like I said, you know, hopefully my my recorder will still work. And I'm hoping that there won't be any issues when I have guests on. And at least I can still do that. I might not be playing WoW the way I wanted to, but if at least I can record the way I want to, that would be half of my my headache gone. And and that's really it. So I guess we should go to the big thing because you know this week was all about BlizzCon 2018. I'll start off by saying that in the end, I was tempted, I was so tempted after last week's show to get the, the virtual ticket because who doesn't want to, to play the game of recognizing everyone that you know in the WoW community, <laughs> in the audience. But I just, I could really not do it. Um, I just couldn't, I couldn't really validate spending that much money and feeling okay with it so in the end i just thought you know what i'm not getting i know this sounds so stupid because it's just pixels but when you get a pet in amount i feel a little bit more like yeah that's all right i don't mind spending extra money but now i just i didn't feel like it would give me anything and also considering the days and already how many issues i had on my computer i just didn't want to get the virtual ticket anymore not for that amount of money so yeah, call me, call me Dutch, call me extra stingy. I just didn't want to dodge it out. Anyhow, I did read all of the MMO champion um, feedbacks. I, I, I've seen a lot of videos. I follow Twitter because you guys are amazing when it comes to tweeting all the new things. And um, I have a few reactions, uh, especially considering the opening cinematic, which I've watched together with Fa. Um, but I think... Certain games are a bit lackluster, and let's just let's just start with all of that. So, I'll start with some of the big things that didn't really appeal to me. Actually, there's only one thing that really didn't appeal to me, which was StarCraft. Now, don't get me wrong, I do own StarCraft, and I've played the the heck out of it. I really, really do love the story from StarCraft. But there's no new story content for it, so they just have a new commander, I think it is. And that's really it. And that really does not interest me. So I'm just like, yeah, shame. No thanks. Uh, unless we get something new. I'm not I'm not really that bothered. Um, so not for me. But something else that is much more RTS that I really, really loved when we saw the, the cinematic is Warcraft 3 Reforged. And it's basically Warcraft 3, but, you know, updated. I think which they've done to the second StarCraft. Uh, didn't they bring out something like that a couple of years ago? I can't remember. I'm not that much into StarCraft that I was really over the moon with it uh, and wanted to buy it. But StarCraft 3 was alright. But anyhow, was it StarCraft 3 or 2? I can't remember. Oh my god. I can't remember. I think it's 2. It's 2. I'm, I'm being an idiot. Anyhow, Warcraft 3 Reforged. Um, I played a lot of Warcraft 3, Frozen Throne and, and all the other things. But I'm, I'm, I think I've said in the past that I'm quite a graphic snob, which is, you know, kind of like ironic now that my, my card won't play properly anymore. Um, by the way, for anyone who says, oh, it might be a graphics card, it really isn't because We've tested it and it works. It's, you know, when you test it in a different computer and it works perfectly, it must, it's software. Trust me on this. Um, and the card is not that old. It's like a, a, a gear, maybe, not even. So, yeah. But yeah. All right. Me, the graphics knob, now has to play World of Warcraft on like settings four. Great. Anyhow, 
Uh, that's one of the reasons why I didn't really enjoy Warcraft 3 playing it now. Just because the animation was a bit weird. And you can forgive that because it is such a good game. But for me at times it was a bit like, oh, I wish we had something like this, but with better graphics. And lo and behold, <laughs> we've got something that looks better. Um, so I have to say, seeing the side by sides of the old graphics and then the new models that they made, it looks really, really good. And I think maybe Arthas looks too much like a, uh, a model, if I'm honest, but it's still really good. I, um, I'm really excited to, uh, to get this game. Now, if you pre-order it, you get actually quite a lot of goodies. So you get a meat wagon mount for in World of Warcraft and the catapult apparently actually works. Which is really cool. Um, I, I can see some of my uh, my tunes uh, riding that around. And you get a card back in Hearthstone. You get the four Warcraft heroes in Heroes of the Storm. Which I think is a good deal. That's not bad. And there's more for it, apparently. So um, that's, that's going to be interesting. Because I've never really thought about getting anything like that. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really really happy for a pre-order with this and I, I think I will do it it will be released in 2019 now of course we don't know when in 2019 it could be summer it could be you know a whole year from now who knows but it will be something I'm going to pre-order before Christmas um, I think you have to pre-order it within is it mid-November before mid-November I'm not entirely sure but I, I'm going to see when when the deadline is and probably get it on the last day or something. Yes, very, very excited about that. I, how do you guys feel? Do you feel that this is a, a good thing? You know, we get a rehash. Um, talking about rehashes, so <laughs> we got World of Warcraft Classic. Uh, at least, well, we knew that, but they've talked a little bit about it in, in the q and I think it was. Didn't see too much about that, but they did summer of 2019. That's going to be interesting. Um, I'm going to assume that's not going to clash with the um, the Warforged one. Just because that would be a bit silly, wouldn't it? That you, you have two Warcraft-based games or Warcraft games launching in the same period. So maybe we'll get this in January? Or February of 2019, and then we, that will tie us over for a bit of a period. And I don't know. I don't know. I guess we'll we'll see. Um, but yeah, Classic will be released in summer of 2019. I will I will probably try it out um, because you know if you have a sub, you get this for free. And um, I was debating <laughs> creating a druid back then because I used to play a druid back then. Uh, I used to play my druid in many wonderful ways, except the ways that it should have been played. I think in the end I was just a mana battery in raids, which, you know, it served its purpose <laughs> with my inner raid. But Moonkins were not really that great, and neither was Restar, I think, in, back in the day. Um, I might just actually go back to Rogue, because everyone hated Rogues back in the day, and I think people still do, so... <laughs> Yeah, who knows? I'm, I might just continue with that. I, I really don't know. I am more interested in it than I thought I would be, because I was a bit like, hmm, not that curious about it. But some of the things that they've said about um, Classic actually piqued my interest. I'm still wondering, you know, um, I, I couldn't see that so quickly in all the notes if... I, I'm assuming that War Mode is not a thing. Because war mode is really much something from now, uh, for BFA. So I'm assuming we're going to get like dedicated servers for RP, PvP, RP, PvP, PvE, all those things. Um, but yeah, that, that's going to be very interesting. And I guess we will have to see where I'm going to go. Probably RP again, uh, but I might go RP, PvP. Because that's how it all started for me, so... Who knows, I might just try it out and curse myself for doing that. Um, so we're not getting flying, which is great, I think. Uh, there are no achievements, no cross realm, so people will have to start behaving again in dungeons. That's going to be very interesting. 
I can foresee uh, ninja looters and um, shaming, naming and shaming on on the realms again. <laughs> um, yeah, actually, that's that's something I'm, I'm quite looking forward to, just because it creates a much tighter community. I almost want to say. I know it sounds a bit odd, but that's how it felt back in the day. Um, I like it that we're getting things like the stages, you know. So uh, stage two is going to be Blackwing Lair, the battlegrounds in Zulgarub. That is going to be so epic. I really want to see the old Zulgarub because I loved it. I really, really enjoyed that. I don't care what other people say. I love troll dungeons. So there you have it. Um, stage three, Anchorage tier um, 0 0.5. That was a freaking pain to get. I remember doing that, um, but it did feel like an achievement back then. So we get Silifus and those green dragons. I presume those are the four green dragons. Was it four? That are all placed over um, the worlds. Uh, I remember one being in the Hinterlands, was one in Darkshire, and the other to Feralus. Wait, no, not Winter Spring. I don't know where the fourth one is. I can't remember where the fourth one is. No idea anymore. Um, so we get those stage four and Xramas raids and the Scorch invasions. Now it's Scorch invasions. I wonder if we'll get that that um, rage that we got back in the day when uh, people started to change and everything, and all of a sudden there was this mass like panic in the big cities, especially in Ironforge, because that was back in the day when everyone did their auction house in Ironforge and not Stormwind, because I don't know if we had an auction house in Stormwind or if it was just not the place to go. So everyone went to Ironforge. Um, yeah, that there was a lot of panic there. It was like invasion of um, zombie days of the dead or whatever it was. It was horrible. But I kind of enjoyed it. <laughs> um, I like it that we're going to get the opening of Anchorage. Because, um, well, like is a big thing. But okay, let me take you back, back to the days of um, the stability of my server. So we had the opening of Anchorage. And this was on a PvP server. So what happens is, um, okay, the gates open. Everyone starts to fire at the big dudes that come out. Um, and then the server crashes because no one could get up, keep up with the graphics and the amount of damage and, and effects. And yeah, the server crashed, people lagged out. It was pretty bad, but it also, you know, it brings back memories like these. Um, and, and I'm going to assume that we'll have a lot more st uh, server stability with modern technology. But I guess, again, it's something that we'll have to see how, how it all pans out. Um, I think the team has said that they've had some issues with putting the old game on the new engines and, and things like that. So, yeah, I'm really curious to see how this, this plays. And I, of course I want to try it. Why not? It's part of World of Warcraft. I don't know if it will pull me away from the current game completely. Um, but it might be a nice distraction now and again. I hope that makes sense. So, yeah, definitely something... Something I want to uh, to see in the future, I think so. Um, right, so that is it for WoW Classic. Other things that, that they've announced, just real quickly. Heroes of the Storm. Quite interesting to, to see that they've actually created their own hero. So it's not based on any of the IPs that we know, like Overwatch or Warcraft or Starcraft, you know, or Diablo. It's, it's just a new hero. Um, her name is Orphea. I think that's how I pronounce it. I think she looks cool. Um, you know, if you have a virtual ticket or you went to BlizzCon, then you can already get this hero for free. Otherwise, we just have to either purchase it with, with real money or with uh, tokens that you get in game, I guess. I think the whole Ravencourt background is quite cool. I uh, I read the, the comic book that was online for it, uh, the online comic, and it was not a bad story. So... It's one of those games that I pl dip in and out of, you know. Sometimes I, I really get into it. I'm like, yeah, I need to play this. And then it just fizzles out because I get consumed by other things. Um, I, I do want to see what has happened to Heroes of the Storm because I know that they had a lot of updates and I know some of my friends are really, really into it. 
So, who knows, maybe, maybe this will pull me back. And another game that might actually pull me back. Because you know how, how big my love for trolls is. And uh, yeah, the next Hearthstone expansion, Arastakan's Rumble, is uh, troll themed. So, <laughs> I will have to, I feel like I have to get this and play this. So we get 135 new cards. And you get a new card type called Overkill. Um, you know, with every new new expansion, they kind of do this. Uh, a new type of card. It's out on the December 4th, which is great. Um, I'm just really wondering if this is the best time to return to the game. Um, because when it, Hearthstone first came out, I actually played so much. Like with Heroes of the Storm. Every time a new game launches of Blizzard, I play so much and then it just fizzles out and then I feel like I'm so far behind and I can't catch up and everyone is basically just ruffle stomping all over me and that doesn't make it a lot of fun for me <laughs> anymore. And uh, I do want to get, like with, with Heroes of the Storm, it's one of those games I really want to get back into. I have another game I really want to get back into, by the way. Um, but... Uh, I just don't know. I don't know. I need I need some like guide who tells me, okay, you're you're an idiot and new. This is how you play <laughs> properly, um, because I don't have all the cards, you know, and and I don't know what I should focus on at the moment before Rastakhan's Rumble comes out, or if I should just wait and just get the packs and and play it that way. I I don't know. So if any of you guys who you know, I was very much into World of Warcraft, but also into Hearthstone. Has any tips? Just let me know. Tell me what to do. The same for Heroes of the Storms. You know, you guys are probably much better at it than me. So I wanna, I wanna give those two a shot again. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited for it. I love it that there's Loa in there and spirits, and I just can't wait. So. I want to see all of that. I want to see the different trolls and some of the artwork on the cards is absolutely beautiful. So I'm looking forward to this expansion very much so. I really like the Witchwood and this this is just completely different again. Um, but yeah, let, let me know if you have any good tips or maybe even a podcast I should listen to. Um, um, uh, you know, uh, Noob Guides pod podcast that works, works for me. Um, right, another game of course, that I want to get into is Overwatch. I used to play Overwatch so much, um, and then all of a sudden just fizzled out. Can't remember why it fizzled out for me, if I'm honest. I am sure it has something to do with World of Warcraft, but I do love the feel I get from Overwatch. Um, maybe it was just at a certain point we got really toxic people in game. I know that they've cracked down on that, so I'm hoping that it will be a little bit better. But I'm still very hesitant to come back just because of how toxic it can be. Anyhow, new hero, Ash. Uh, she's a damage dealer with a rifle and a dynamite uh, throw, which is really cool. I just like the shotgun. Um, her ultimate is um, Bob, <laughs> which is... Um, uh, oh no, it's not like a robot, but I'm just going to say robot. And I think the cinematic was really, really cool. I love that she has the white hair. She looks like a proper badass. I like it that she hit McCree in the face. I have nothing against McCree, but I just like it that, you know, she's she's on that level. Um, I never used to like McCree, but I actually think he looks pretty damn good in this video. And uh, yeah, I'm really interested to see where this is going and to see if we get more of those um, those kind of like cowboy-esque heroes or villains so really curious of course in the cinematic we saw that there was some kind of robotic um angel type she she looked a little bit like mercy i'm going to presume that this is a um a healer type we're going to get her, her name is echo i think it was um so we're going to get her later maybe that's the gist i got from the from the video not quite there yet but at least we got ash and um, yeah, I'm I'm really, really surprised with how much I like her. I think it also has to do with the fact that she's being voiced by Jennifer Hill, who I absolutely adore. I mean, come on, guys, you know how big my love for Mass Effect is. So having her as a voice actor for her is just great. Um, and who knows, maybe, I don't know, maybe my frames 
just drop in in World of Warcraft and my Steam games. I don't know, because I can't play my Steam games either. <laughs> but I, I might be okay with Overwatch. I don't know. I'm just going to try. I need to try them. It's, it's very disheartening seeing your, um, your game just die on you when you try to play. Anyhow, now we come to... Uh, I was almost going to say the black sheep of the uh, the family, which is Diablo. And I don't know if this was over overhyped by Blizzard or the community, but I... Okay, so Diablo Immortal is a mobile game, and it's set between the story of Diablo 2 and 3. I think it looks alright, but that that's me. You know, I'm not really like hardcore Diablo player. I played it because I, I enjoyed the story. I had my gripes with, with the Reaper expansion just because I just felt like the story was just cut really short for what it was um, and I would have liked to see more. But other than that, I I love the dark setting in, in Diablo and you know, it, I have nothing against the, the game at all and I think for me personally I don't get offended, but I feel that the panel didn't deserve the reaction it got from the people in the crown. I don't think, I think booing is very childish. I also think it shows a lack of respect for people who, who they probably worked really hard on this game. Did they miss the bat? Yeah, probably. I'm sure that they, they uh, missed the bat, Mr. Paul. I'm sure that they didn't anticipate this kind of reaction and in all fairness you know no one makes a game to get booed at or to have the the fans absolutely hate it that's not why they spend all that time and effort in there you know they might have done like t long days just to get certain things out in time so i think it's a matter of respect can you dislike it absolutely you have every right to dislike something but i think there's a way of how to express that and how to um go about it Especially when when it's at a convention like this, but it just I don't know, man. Maybe it's maybe it's hardcore fans or something, but it's that's not me. I would not do that. Would I would I actively say on a forum or something that I'm not happy with it because of certain reasons? Absolutely. But it's like with any discussion, just saying, oh, this this freaking sucks because blah blah blah, and then you you just spout inane reasons. That doesn't work, you know. Give them some feedback that they can work with. Why don't you like it? What what should be improved? I mean, yeah, did they miss... <laughs> I don't think they should have said everyone has phones, right? Because that's not really what people want to hear at that point in time. That's not the right thing to say. I guess it was just the heat of the moment. But I, I'm very willing to give this game a shot. Um, it's on my phone. I don't know how comfortable it will be on playing on my phone, if I'm honest. Um, I feel like it's almost more like a tablet game, if if I'm totally fair. Just because you have to be, have a freaking big phone to see everything on it and not to miss anything. I am not the kind of person who likes hack and slash uh, dungeon exploring like that. That's not really for me. Like I said, I played it just because I wanted to see the story. And I think Blizzard does one of the best cinematics out there. So that's why I wanted to, to play the game. But it depends how much it's going to cost me um, to play this on a mobile. I, I will think, I think I will get it if I'm honest, depending on the price. Um, I don't know if I can properly play it on the phone though, but we, we will see. We will see. So I don't think it deserves that much hate that it got from from BlizzCon. Uh, but yeah, how do how you guys feel? Um, like I said, you know. You have every right to hate it, absolutely. But why can you can you explain why you are so against it? Or you know, I, I'd like to hear a proper discussion about this. Um, so yeah, that's all of the other games announced. Was there anything that stood out for you that you thought, okay, this is really cool, and I'm not so happy with this? Just curious, just curious. Uh, some of you have already replied, so I will get back to that. Um, let's go to what it's all about, World of Warcraft. So, really interesting to see that they announced certain things. 
Um, I'll stop into small things. So we get a little uh, charity pat again, which is great. Uh, so we get Wumper, who is a little um, yeti, and I love him. He's so adorable. And all the proceedings go to code.org, which I think is great. You know, I, I'm definitely going to get this little uh, battle pet. Even if I can't play properly, who cares? It's for charity. So, yeah, I think that's really important. Um, then the WoW cinematic of Lost Honor. So we see Sour Fang and Anduin. A little bit of good boy Gren. Uh, again, Grey Maid. <laughs> which, I, I love the Worgen model, but I'll talk about that later on. Um... And I feel like we're being set up for a coup of the Horde leadership. So, spoiler for those who don't want to know. Um, you know that in, in the, in the testing, we're already having to make that choice between Sylvanas or Saurfang. And I really feel that that is being set up, that we are going to get that choice. And that we are going to... I don't know if Sylvanas will be killed. I doubt it very much. I, I think she will be taken away as leader of the, the Horde. But maybe we'll get that third faction and Forsaken do something completely for themselves. Um, I don't know. But that's what it feels like. I, I feel very much because Chris Metzen was there asking a question that... Are we going to be set up for Thrall returning? Because it does feel like this is the expansion that all the big players are coming back. I mean, we're getting Warcraft 3 Reforged, which is basically going to introduce, you know, Thrall, Jaina, Arthas, um, and Tarandi, and, and Illidan, all those characters. And from all of them, I mean, Jaina came back this expansion, but Thrall is the one that we have not seen anymore. I'm not talking about Arthas because you know, we know what the situation is with the Lich King, but Thrall is just one that just completely disappeared, like Raffian, I might add. So I want to know what's happening with him. Is he going to pick up the Manful of the Horde, P Horde again, or what's happening with that? And I wouldn't be against Thrall, as long as he's not such a hippie like he used to be um, in the last bits. I, that whole house father thing... Yeah, no, not really doing it for me. So it will be cool if they could change all of that uh, and make him uh, a proper leader again. Or I don't know, maybe his kids grow up really quickly and, and one of them takes over leadership. I have no idea. Um, I think a lot of us still want to see Zappy Boy or Sour Fang as leader. Personally, I would be happy with either Thrall or Sour Fang, if I'm honest. I think we need a, another orc uh, and otherwise a troll. But Bane would be good as well. So, yeah. Nothing against Sylvanas. I'm, I'm, you know, I still think she's a really cool character, but I just don't feel like she fits the Horde leadership. That's me. Um, I think she's a perfect leader for the Forsaken, though. Anyhow, back to, to the, the cinematic. I really love just how it's done. I love the interaction between Anduin and Saurfang. Love how Anduin doesn't seem really that afraid and is very much about the honor still much more a tactician and a thinker compared to you know how Varian ruled uh, of course Varian changed a little bit over the, over the years but again it's very much you know hot headed and everything so I like seeing Anduin in this role but he does look a lot younger again in this cinematic like, I honestly feel... I thought he was 18, but he feels more like 15, 16 watching this video. Um, yeah. Interesting. Very interesting. I, I want to see more of this. And I'm just loving the fact that we're getting so many cinematics with patches and, and everything. So, yeah. I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, more things that we're getting... Patches, of course. Patch 8.1, Tides of Vengeance. And they even said something about patch 8.1.5. So, patch 8.1. We're getting the uh, Kul Tyrans and the Zandalari Trolls. I am very surprised with some of those uh, those reveals. So, just to, to sum it up. Kul Tyrans humans can be druids, hunters, monks, priests, rogue, shaman, and warriors. 
Zondalari trolls can become druids, hunters, mage, monks, priests, rogues, shaman, warriors, and paladins. Paladins? Like, really? That really has me surprised, but I like it. So I'm going to wonder how many um, Tauren and Blood Elves are going to transfer to Zandalari Paladins. But yeah, no, I, I quite... I'm digging it. That's going to be really, really interesting. Um, so the racials are really, really interesting. For Kul'Tearan humans, you get Brush It Off, which increases your versatility and re regenerate a portion of the damage taken. Child of the Sea, very cool name. Um, so you can hold your breath longer and swim faster. Makes sense. Haymaker, you haul off and punch an enemy, stunning and knocking them back. Uh, Jack of all trades, so you increase um, skills in every trade skill. And the Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. I don't know, Mariner, Mariner, or uh, Mariner. Reduces frost and nature damage taken. That's all right. That's not too bad. So I, I just love the names of these because it fits so well with like a, a sea faring nation, but the Zandalari troll racials, can we just appreciate, embrace the Loa. So you pray to a Loa and gain their favor, like, you can pick your Loa? Can I just, can I pick Yanni? Because I really, what do you get? What do you get when you pray to Yanni? That's what I want to know. Um, City of Gold, loot additional coin from monsters, regenerating... Uh, concentrate to heal quickly over a short time and Pterodax swoop can whistle up a Pterodax to glide you to the ground. Like, fuck me. This is are some really good, good racials. I really like it. So, yeah, I might have to transfer everything to Zandalari Troll now. Um, cause this is, this is really out there. I really, really love it. Um, I will be creating a Zandalari Druid just because I think the Druid forms look badass. I really think they look good. The one thing I want to talk about though, and I don't know if you guys have seen it, but they showcased the Kul'Tearan humans and I don't, maybe I missed it because I didn't have a live stream and you guys might have seen it, but was I right to see that there was no balance form for um, Kul'Tearans? Because I know that they've shown the the chicken in the past and that the you know the community wasn't that enthusiastic about it and then they went why didn't we get the big wicker monster I'm wondering if we are going to get a change and they actually are going to create a wicker monster for us because that would be much much cooler if you play an alliance druid for balance and you don't get another chicken but you get something a little bit more you know creepy I think we need something creepy, considering that the rest is also quite creepy. Um, yeah, so no, I, I'm i really interested in uh, in the new allied races, but like I said, you know, I don't have no reputation whatsoever to get them, so I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon for me. Um, and not until everything gets fixed, unfortunately. Um, yeah, so really really happy about that releasing on december the 11th that's really good news um we also get a new raid that new raid won't be released until early 2019 i mean in fairness that could be january february that's early in my opinion that shouldn't be march <laughs> march is not early anymore um other things that we've seen terror of dark shore that cinematic is almost like a horror setting like how fucking fast is Malfurion as a bear? Like, I, I'm sorry, I think his bear form looks stupid, but that's me. That's my opinion. I know other people love it. I just don't like it. I really don't like it. Um, but that bear is freaking fast. Like, I've never seen a bear just go that fast. I guess when you're, you know, like the highest druid out there, you have extra skill points and speed. I don't know. Um, I do love Tyrandi's new look. I like it that both of them look as if they could really do some damage. Um, yeah, they they look uh, much better than when they were fleeing um, Darkshore. So <laughs> let's hope that they can redeem themselves a little bit with uh, how we've perceived them, especially with Tyrandi. I feel like she needs to look a lot more like the warrior she used to be. But that looks pretty cool to me. So other small things we're going to get... 
remember getting a roller coaster in the Dark Moon Fair. I guess I'll try it out once, I don't know what it does, but uh, maybe make me really, really sick with motion sickness or anything like that. Getting a Children's Week holiday. Um, so we're getting Colteran and Zandalari orphan quests in there, which is good, I think. Uh, going to be interesting. Um, some more micro holidays. Um, time walking for Warlords of Draenor. Ooh, I guess they have to do it, but I don't know how to feel about that one. <laughs> I don't know how you guys feel about that. Um, so yeah, we'll get those those dungeons. Uh, we also get two new mount rewards for that. So I guess people who collect their mounts, you get a black helix or an armored wolf model that you can see in the Blackrock Foundry uh, Beast Lord fight. That's pretty cool. We get more specific portal rooms um, are being added in Ogrimmar and Stormwind. I hope there's a portal to um, to the new areas because that's my biggest uh, pet peeve at the moment. I just want them all together, that would be nice. Um, professions will have new quests called Tools of the Trade, which grants them an epic quality item useful for their craft. I think it's good. I haven't really done anything with professions if I'm honest in this expansion. I just started collecting things. I do want to pick something up for my warlock and I'm thinking about doing tailoring and enchanting. I'm thinking more tailoring and then maybe a gathering thing like um, herbalism or something. Just I don't really care that much about enchanting if I'm honest. But tailoring is something that I do enjoy uh, if only for the transport gear that you can make. And uh, yeah, that, that's a new thing then. So. Not bad. I guess it, you know, it's more like, it's not like the selfie update, but it's not like a massive update. More like a uh, little bit of extra little dashes of new things in there. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Same with the Brawler's Guild. Never really done it. So we will see what happens with that. A lot of new updates with the, with the look of things. So Warsong and Arafi, the Battlegrounds are being remastered with high definition updates. That's cool. Um, I haven't really done a battleground in like forever, not until there was like a um, something special you could get for it, but after that I really haven't played. Now the one thing that's getting an update that I just want to take some time for are uh, the Worgen and Goblin models. So we are going to um, get those. Um, I'm not entirely sure when, I think it's 8.2.5, well god knows when that is. Um, so. The goblins, those new models actually look really cool. I presume we're going to get a few more, you know, animations for them, uh, just new animations. The details are a little bit more defined and I, I already think that the goblins actually look really cool. Now, the one thing I was really curious about was the Worgen model. And like some people have said, you know, Worgen look so much better now because you can actually see the fur detail of a lot of animals in game. And you could see that with the new Worgen models, yeah, absolutely, especially with, with Gen in game, that looks so much better on him. Seeing the new male Worgen looks perfectly fine, I can't see any, any fault really with it. Now, my gripe is with the female Worgen. I think people know how in the past I've always described her as a rabbit chihuahua because she has a very round head, the snarl is weird, the eyes are still like bedroom eyes, it just, it does not look good. Um, the model we're getting now, I can only describe it as a friendly anime husky. I can't see much wolf in it, compared to the male worgen. Trust me, yeah, I'll, I'll give it this, it looks miles better than the old model. But it doesn't look vicious. Not like the male worgen. I mean, the male worgen has freaking glowing eyes. Honestly, why why does the female worgen not get that? Why do you just get nice, happy, you know, bright blue eyes? No. Also need scary glowing eyes. I mean, just because you're a female doesn't mean that you're less vicious as a worgen. I, uh, again, it looks better. I'll probably be happy when I see it in game and of course we don't know all the optimization I'm sure that you'll get different faces different options but I would have liked to see a little bit more like scary female worgen and not scary as in rabbit chihuahua head um, yeah I'm not I'm, I'm not convinced not yet 
but we will see. We will see how it looks in game. And again, 8.2.5 is so far away. Um, I'm, I'm not going to expect it until like summer, probably. That's what I'm thinking. Um, and then you'll see that it will be March. <laughs> so I don't know. But yeah, I'm, I'm not I'm not convinced by the female wargun. Um, we will get two new land masses in 8.2 and th that patch is actually called Rise of Ashara. So we'll get Najatar, uh, which is a landmass beneath the sea. God, please don't let us have to do that weird jumping thing uh, with, with heavy boots and uh, no, 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 don't want that. Um, and we get the other area, which is Mechagon. Is it Mechagon? Which is a new landmass. It's all about an ancient uh, lost city of the gnomes. You see a lot of gnomes that are half robots. Um, yeah, mecha gnomes. So kind of cool. I'm more interested in in uh, Najatar, if I'm honest. Uh, but I'm a little bit hesitant about the whole Vizier vagina, you know, underwater stuff. So we'll get a new story quest. We'll get new friends for Horde and the Alliance. Maybe future allied races. A lot of replayable content. Does that mean dailies? <laughs> I think it means dailies. Um, you know, we'll get mounts and everything. I liked it that they actually said that the crab, a crab mount that you can get will walk sideways like it should. Uh, and there's baby naga pets, which is a little bit weird. I mean, you know, a baby naga pet. I don't know. I feel a little bit freaked out about that. But I guess it's the same as having the little boy uh, who's your squire as a pet. It's also a bit odd. So yeah. At least we're getting a new um, raid. So we'll get the, the Ashara's Eternal Palace. Um, a Queen Ashara fight. I was really surprised about that. And we're already getting that. Don't know if we'll defeat her. If it will be something like kill fast. Like, you know, this is not the end. The last you've seen of me. And then we'll see her somewhere else. Um, now Mechagon with the, the lost city of the gnomes. That's actually quite interesting. Because it's... You know, what Frasley said about his the questing he did about the gnomes that have gone disappearing. I wonder if this all ties in. So um, that would be interesting if it actually does. Which makes me want to level more through the Alliance area once my PC is fixed. I know, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm repeating myself constantly. It's just, this is so annoying, so infuriating. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I like where this is going. The fact that we are getting more storylines and I do like that they throw us little curveballs and I do feel like they're listening about what the community wants and, and we're getting a lot of uh, interesting concepts. We're getting more story for Sylvana, Saurfang, Anduin and Jaina, which is great. Magni's quest to save Azeroth, you know, that will also continue. I'm not too bothered with that anymore. I, I, yeah, I know it sounds bad. I know that we walk over Azeroth, but I'm a little bit like, eh, done now. <laughs> I don't really care. Um, heritage armor for Torn and Gnomes. I think it looks alright. I think the Torn look uh, slightly better than the Gnomes, but that's my personal opinion. I know that other people will go, no, I love the Gnomes much more. It's not not too bad, not too shabby. I'm I'm sure that we'll get many more. Um, what do we have left? So we have humans left. We have orcs left, and goblins, worgen. I'm just quickly thinking. Uh, Draenei. Uh, we got the blood elves and we got the dwarves. So, yeah, we still have have quite a bit to go. Pathfinder Part Two will be happening. So flying will come at Rise of Ashara. We'll get the bee, the griffin, and the mechanical parrot mounts. That bee mount is pretty cool. That's that's something I would like to see. Um, yeah, I think everything is very promising for the future for World of Warcraft. I am looking forward to uh, to all these changes and all these updates. I really do feel like they are really, really looking at story and content for. Uh, for World of Warcraft and I'm really enjoying myself I'm, I'm still happy to be playing this game let's hope that you know it will stay strong it will stay strong and it will end strong and that's really I think that's really it for um, BlizzCon uh, I haven't seen much of the other stuff I heard some really good stories and 
I hope that you guys really enjoyed yourselves at BlizzCon. And of course, you guys have also said what you thought about BlizzCon. I'm going to presume that these people all bought virtual tickets. But if you've been there, I would like to hear your opinion about how it was. Um, yeah, yeah, let me know. What, what is it like to be there? And uh, we can talk about that next time. So uh, Blind Ink Poe said, I wasn't looking forward to anything really, but I leave hyped. The cinematics shown are beautiful, as usual. I only wish StarCraft and Diablo had something more. I, I absolutely am 100% behind you with that. I do wish that StarCraft and Diablo had a bit more. I think Diablo would have been better received, or if, you know, they would have said, oh, and we have a new Diablo expansion coming in the future, like they did with the Elder Scrolls. That's something that they should have done, really. Um... But yeah, I I have to say I'm kind of hyped for it all too. I'm still kind of happy I didn't buy the ticket though. <laughs> still not worth the money. Um, Kristen said Najatar in 8.2. Also, I play a bit of Hearthstone, so that will be fun. And I never played Warcraft 3, so the new Warcraft 3 Reforged really appeals to me. Kristen, you're gonna love it. <laughs> well, at least I used to love the, the Warcraft 3. So I'm hoping that you will love it as well with the new one. But yeah, Hearthstone, maybe you need to give me some tips. Give me some tips on how to start again. Because I really, really need to get back into it. And Jordan said, This one was pretty cool. Opening ceremony left me wanting more. And what's next uh, panel sat satiated that desire. That's good. That's good. I'm happy to, to hear that you guys all experienced it as a good convention. But if you've been to BlizzCon, just let me know how it was, because I am so curious about what it's like to experience it on the floor. And, you know, have you tried any of the games? What did you think? You know, is the mobile game really that bad? <laughs> or is it actually quite good? And that's it. So I wouldn't say it's a shorter show than normal. Still, you know, reasonably long. Again, guys, thank you so much. Again, I'm sorry, no interview this time. We just have to do it with all of this. And yes, I did, you know, take a lot of stuff from MMO Champion because that's where I get my news. I'm not normally one who reads the news, but I had to do it this time. So I do give credit to MMO Champion for writing most of this down. I'm just giving you my opinion about it. And um, so far, I'm really, really looking forward to anything that's to come to 8.1.5. Is that it? Is that the first one we're getting? Or is it 8.2, 8.1, 8.1, that's it. We're not that far yet, so my god, my, the numbers are all over the place. I'm not very good with numbers. So, we will see. I'm going to try and play some more on my Warlock uh, with the stuttering and jumping all around. I'm going to close everything else down and just focus on World of Warcraft for about an hour until my brain explodes. And um, yeah, hopefully by next week I'll have a new home. I can tell you a bit more about that, and uh, we'll see what happens. Pray, pray for me that we're going to get a, uh, a Microsoft and a NVIDIA update, and that will fix all my issues. If you are a computer whiz and go, oh no, so this is what you need to do, and I haven't tried it yet, I will gladly try it. I am even uh, desperate enough now to go back to Windows 7. I don't know if I should, but I am I am there now. I'm at that point that I'm sick and tired of Windows updates messing me about. Help me. That's basically it. Help me. If you want to contact the show, you can do that on Twitter. Follow at whispers underscore of underscore war. Uh, you can email the show whispersofwarpodcast at gmail.com and of course you can find all the other shows in the show notes at whispersofwar.podbean.com Anyhow, have a wonderful time in um, Azeroth. If you're traveling back still, be safe. Um, I hope you had a lot of fun and I will see you all in Azeroth next week. Bye!